So this account happened several years ago. I was 18 at the time. My father asked me if I wanted to make a little extra money. Of course I said yes and he got this contract from the school for the summer to clean and get ready for next year. He had other jobs to do so I helped him with this one and of course he would pay me for the work I did. I had worked a couple of nights with my dad. He would tell me what to do and where to go just to get me familiar with the school and show me what keys to open what doors. So once I had that down, he would leave to go do other work while I would stay at the school. I had a morning job, so did my dad, so we would go later at night, like 8 or 9 to start, and depending on how quickly I did the job, I would usually be done at 1 or 2 in the morning. Anyways, the school was big, three floors with two gyms and several offices and a small chapel too. There were crosses everywhere and pictures of Jesus, of course, and I never felt uncomfortable. But this one night, I just finished waxing one of the gym's floors, and I was alone that one night. My dad would come back and pick me up later. It was about 11.30, and like I said, I had just finished the gym. I was walking down the hallway back to the janitor room to get more supplies when I heard the gym door close behind me, scaring the crap out of me. I knew I had propped the door open, but I paid no mind to it. I just went back and opened the door again and propped it open again, making sure it wouldn't slam shut. Nothing else happened for the next half hour or so till I heard someone call my name. It was faint at first, like at a distance. I thought it was my dad, so I waited till I heard my name being called out again. It was much clearer this time, and it did sound like my dad. I yelled back that I'm in the office, and I kept cleaning, waiting for him to come my way, and I waited about five minutes, but he never came, so I dropped what I was doing and I yelled again that I was in the office cleaning as I was walking down the hallway where I heard him calling me from. That's when I realized it couldn't be him. The doors are locked so no one without a key can get in, and I had all the keys with me. I checked my pocket just to confirm, and sure enough, the bunch of them were there. As soon as that happened, I grabbed my cell phone and called my dad to see if maybe he was yelling from outside in. I get a hold of him and ask him if he was finished with his other job. He tells me he's just finishing up and will be there in 30 minutes. My heart sank and my blood ran cold. I said okay, I'll see you then and I hung up. I tried hard not to think about it as I returned to the office and continued working. Nothing else happened that night and I don't want to drag this on so I'll make another post with all the other creepy things that started happening while working at that school. It will be an all-in-one story that was basically the intro. Well, I am here yet again with another story as my time as a janitor in a Catholic school. Like I ended my last story, this time will be a compilation of everything that happened to me at that school. Aside from strange noises here and there, what really got me were the voices, specifically the mimicking of my father's voice. The next time I heard my dad's voice, I was working in one of the washrooms. I was just finishing up the mopping of the floors and I had the door held open by the bucket. As I was exiting the bathroom and moving the bucket away from the door, I could clearly hear his voice say my name from inside the washroom. There was no way it was him. I didn't hesitate to walk right in and look for him. I opened every stall just to make sure and of course there was nobody. Like I said, I had mentioned in my last story that this school had a small sanctuary and in this sanctuary it had a statue of the Virgin Mary and several pictures of Jesus on the cross Nothing that would creep anyone out, I would think. But this one time when I was repolishing the seats, I could swear someone or something was watching me. I was unsettled. I kept looking behind me, never seeing anybody there. But I did notice one thing. The statue was in a slightly different position than before. Believe me or not, I know it had moved. Originally, the Virgin Mary had her head positioned downwards and to the right of her shoulders, eyes closed. But when I saw her eyes opened on one of the times I looked behind me, I knew something was different. Not only that, but her head was more raised and centered, as if she was looking right at me. I was so uncomfortable and just plain freaked out about it that I dropped what I was doing and left. There was no way that I was going back there, and I did tell my dad that I never went back in there, and every time I would walk by there I can hear the organ that was in there playing, but that was only after the statue occurrence happened. Now, it could have been automated, I kept telling myself, but I wasn't going to check. I started bringing my MP3 with me and listening to my own music. Of course, I told my dad about the strange happenings, and he never did question it. 
I asked him if anything similar ever happened and he would say he would hear noises and people talking as well, but he would just brush it off and keep working. On the last day that I would work there, my father and I finished up and started making sure all the doors were locked. We started to head to the main entrance and I held the door open while my dad started inputting the security code. When he finished and closed and headed my way, he closed the door and we both heard the organ just blasting. It startled the both of us. It was so loud it echoed through the halls. We stood there just for a second and turned around making our way to the car. I was so relieved that I would never have to set foot back inside that school ever again. This is a true story from an event that happened when I was just a little boy. I'm a 23 year old man who, as of late, came to remember a terrifying experience as a 7 year old kid. Back when I was in second grade, my mother and two siblings lived next door to my great grandparents in a cottage she rented from them. The rent was cheap and since it was beachfront property, mom got a real bargain. I lived in the main house, given the limited amount of room in the cottage. It was spring break and mom and I were the only people around the property. My brother and sister were visiting my aunt and younger cousins. I was offered a choice to go too but I opted out because there was a Godzilla movie marathon all week and being a huge fan of the monster I couldn't pass it up. Two nights later mom had finished up cleaning up the table and I helped with dishes. Shortly after that I curled up on the living room couch to watch Godzilla vs. Biollante. I must have fallen asleep during the movie because everything in the house was off and mom was already in bed. At least that's what I could gather. In the lower story of the house, the kitchen tile and the living room carpet were separated by a rubber border that was used to seal the tile and cover the carpet tack strip. The only two animals we had in the house were an Australian Shepherd who was called Tucker, which easily weighed 60 pounds, and Smokey, a puffy black calico cat which never came downstairs. Now old Tucker had long toenails that would click on the wood top stairs. He also made quite a ruckus if he came down the steps because he was a decent sized dog. I heard a sick slapping sound that my palms would make when I drum on the tile floor in the kitchen. Now if mom was in the kitchen making herself a snack, she'd need to turn on a light to see. No lights, no mom standing in the kitchen, nobody at all. I covered my head with my blanket and stayed perfectly still. Another smacking sound of flesh slapping tile. This one was closer than before. I listened and counted four distinct slaps. Whatever it was had been on all fours. It kept going until the smacking was replaced by the soft padding of feet on carpet. I heard breathing inches from my face before the source of the sound moved away and up the steps. I stayed awake under the covers until dawn. Mom came downstairs and seemed surprised by my disheveled appearance. She claimed I came upstairs in the middle of the night trying to wake her up by snarling like Godzilla. I never moved from that couch that night. Even as I type this, it gives me chills. I had never been a believer in anything paranormal. I've always thought it's a load of crap, to put it lightly, however considering something that happened to me, I think I am a believer now. It happened on a Friday night, way back in November of last year, 2017. I was home alone in the house. Both brothers were out. One was based away in the army, one out Friday night drinking, and my parents were doing the weekly food shopping and weren't due to be back for a few hours. At around 8pm I got incredibly bored and decided to run a bath. So I go do just that. I go into my bathroom, I turn the taps on to tap mode, basically I have a 2 in 1 for my taps. Both the hot and cold flow through the same outlet and also there is this tiny lever. If you flick it to the right, you can use a shower head, flick it to the left, use the taps. I turn it to tap mode, turn the taps on, open the window and go back to my PC whilst the bath fills up. About 15 minutes later the bath is pretty full, so I lock my PC and get into the bath. I don't do anything, just watch YouTube vids on my phone. I don't use the shower, don't use the taps at all, so they are still in tap mode. Just lie there with my phone. I'm only in the bath about 15 minutes and decide to get out. 
I stand, dry myself off, and wait for the water to finish emptying. After it does, I go back into my bedroom. Now for the weird stuff. About 20 minutes later, I notice it sounds like it's raining. Hard. But I have my bedroom window open, and can confirm it was a quiet, dry, chilly English Friday night. So I go out onto the landing and can still hear the rain, except it obviously isn't rain. It's my shower. This straight away freaks me out and I get that horrible cold feeling on my neck. The old hair raising feeling that people always talk about. I never use the shower ahead. I never turn the tap to shower mode and I am the only person in the house so why can I hear the shower? I go to the bathroom door and open it. Instantly the shower goes off. I hear this huge clunking sound, the sound of pipes clunking after you turn a tap off after it's open fully. I assume the sound is water pressure from being open and closed so fast. I turn the light on and can see the whole room is misty from hot water. The shower head is dripping and water is draining down my bath. I freak out a bit, look at the tap, it's still turned to tap mode. I turn the tap on, yep, water flows out the tap. I have no idea how the shower was on, how hot water was coming out of it, or how it all stopped just after I opened the door. I go check the whole house after this. I go into every room, check under each bed, look in each wardrobe, look behind the sofa, under the dining room table. The doors are locked, the windows locked, CCTV shows no one being outside that night, nothing spooky, just parents leaving to go shopping and returning hours later. The only other thing I noticed was my birds being completely fixated on the corner of my living room. I couldn't get their attention. They just sat there, heads tilted looking into the corner of the room. This is odd as my birdies are not hand tame. They much prefer the company of each other. We basically bring the water and the food, but they just weren't interested in me. I even stuck my finger in and tried to rub one of their tummies. They just looked at me and climbed up to the top of the cage to get a good look again at the corner of the room. I really did not like that. So, freaked out, I just go into my room and await my parents. It sounds stupid, but I just can't explain why this happened. I know my mom and grandmother have experienced things in this house before, but never myself. The house has been in my family for three generations, from brand new when it was built in the late, late 1800s. It's just weird. I didn't like it and I'm now pretty convinced the paranormal was a lot more real than I previously thought. So this happened last year. My aunts like to travel a lot now that she's retired and she'll ask me to take her to the airport. She lives about an hour outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in a place that's pretty rural. She doesn't like traveling out of PHL and will instead go to EWR, Newark Liberty International Airport, for those not familiar with the code or area. So last year she decided to go to South and Central America for a month and asked me to come to her house to drive her since she didn't trust in my brother to actually show up when he said he would. I met her at her place the night before, went to bed for a few hours, then we left in her car at 1am so she could get to the airport in time. We decided to take her car because it's a mid-sized SUV and held her luggage better than my sedan did. I guess we had been on the road for about 20 minutes. I'm not entirely sure because my perception of the passage of time isn't amazing, but we had to drive through a lot of small little old villages, not sure what else to call them, they were basically clumps of 10 houses in a small area. The homes were all super close to the road, like basically right on top of it, which helped note them as being a lot older. None of the lights were on, not even candle lamps in the windows, and if you're from Pennsylvania, you know what I'm talking about with those lamps. They're everywhere. The area had a lot of woods. It was overall just very creepy and very foggy out. We were driving along, and all of a sudden, we came up on... something. It was facing toward a telephone pole off to the right of the car. The pole was just in front of a garage or a small barn structure. All I could see was the back of its head completely white, no hair, and its hands and its forearms which were totally white. It looked like it was wearing a dark shirt or something of that nature, but it was facing away from us, leaning into the telephone pole with its arms up against the pole and its head against its arms, 
or at least a stance similar to that. The worst feeling I had ever felt rose up in my chest when I saw it. I felt my heart almost stop and drop into my stomach. I felt sick and terrified. All I knew was that whatever it was, I didn't want it to turn around, no matter what. I knew it couldn't be allowed to turn around or I would regret it. I've seen a lot of really weird things in my life and felt a lot of really weird sensations. I've always been super sensitive to energy in homes and I have straight up seen ghosts in my parents' home, one of which I am very wary of. The other I am comforted by, but that's a different story for a different time. But this, this was actually terrifying. I cannot explain the immense feeling of dread and horror I experienced in that moment to you. You could only understand if you've experienced it yourself. We passed it by so quickly and it was so late that I thought I must have imagined it, but that feeling stuck with me. I didn't say anything to my aunt, I thought she didn't see it either, but about ten seconds after we went past it she says, Did you? And the long pause, Did you see that thing? We talked about it, she described to me exactly what I saw. I knew right then and there that I was going to be terrified to drive back to her home to switch cars at 4 or 5 a.m. when I got back to her place from the airport, by myself, and all I could think is that I didn't want that thing to be there, because I would hit it if it came into the road, and I wouldn't stop to check if I did. It wasn't going to get to me. Luckily, it wasn't there when I drove past the same area again on the way to her home, and believe me, I was hyper aware the entire way there. I was even terrified to walk from her front door to my car. I ran and locked myself in as soon as I sat down and shut the car door. The next time I drove her to the airport, I looked for it, but it wasn't there. I haven't seen it since. I've only told a couple of friends about it, and one of them and her best friend saw something similar peeking at them around the back side of her house when they were sitting in her car one night. She also lives in rural PA, 19 miles from me, about a 40 minute drive, and I'm 22-ish miles outside of Philly, also roughly 40 minutes of a drive. She also lives out in the woods. Have any of you ever experienced something like this? I saw a video once online of something that just had a white head and white long legs walking around, and it didn't look like that. This thing was tall and had distinct arms and legs. It had no hair whatsoever on its body. I don't know if it had facial features because it was facing towards the pole, almost like it was counting for hide and go seek with its arms wrapped up. It might have been hugging onto the pole. It wore something black and I experienced the worst and most deeply jolting fear in its presence, and I was only near it for a few seconds. Before I left for college, I lived with my parents in the house that we all heard weird noises, and such as people walking up and down steps when no one else is home, TV randomly turning on. After I left for college, my parents sold the house and asked me to come home to pack up my things to help move. All bedrooms in my house were on the second floor and the stairs coming upstairs were located closer to my parents' bedroom than my own so that the majority of the hallway stretched down toward my room, maybe eight feet from the stairs to my door. I spent the day packing when I came home so that when I went to bed, my room was nothing but boxes and my mattress on the floor. Not long after I turned out my light, I heard someone walking up and down the stairs. I get spooked and turn my bedroom light on. My door is shut due to this occurring many times before. I sit up on my mattress and look at the door when I suddenly hear someone sprint up the stairs and down the hall to my door and stop just outside. I then hear knocking that starts toward the bottom of the door and moves up and down until it reaches about halfway up the door and stops. I didn't sleep at all that night. I kept my lights on and messed around on my laptop until the sun came up. I never heard any more steps that night and felt like someone was just standing there all night waiting for me to open the door. I always felt like the presence was of a kid and the fact that they only knocked halfway up the door felt like confirmation of that. I still sleep with my door shut and actually make my husband sleep between me and the door.
It all happened with a nightmare. I can't recall what the dream was, not that it's important. The rest from this point to the encounter is important. My parents' bedroom is set up in a square shape with around four closets at the time which were all walk-in. There is another small open rectangle room connected to my parents' room. It's a small cat room. I think we had an exercise bike in there at the time. I'm not too sure. The bed was facing the three closets which were all closed. The other thing is that none of the cats seemed to be in the room at the time, which tells me that this thing was there, or that it had been hiding. Back to me. I was between my mom and my dad. My dad is a heavy sleeper and snores. My mom is a somewhat heavy sleeper. I'm a light sleeper. My mom was facing the fourth closet, the one next to the one of the two windows. My dad was facing my mom and I. I remember waking up when my dad started snoring. When I woke up, something felt off. I knew something was staring at me. At first I thought it was my dad or mom, but I knew my mom was facing the closet from seeing the way her body was facing and her hair brushing against my right arm. I knew my dad was sleeping since I looked over at him and his eyes were obviously closed. Then I looked into the dark. I looked for a few minutes, maybe five or four, since the clock was on that side of the bed. On that side was the second and third window. The second large window had a curtain which was white. The third window was small and narrow, with no curtain. I turned over again and then faced my mother. This is when I saw it. I'm unsure if it was there or my eyes playing a trick, but when I turned I got a very quick glimpse of it. The thing was tall, of course, it was white. The thing seemed to fade away at the knees or hips. It seemed to be hovering just above the bed. Its arms were at its side, but it didn't seem to have hands, just stubs. The head was blurry, while its whole body seemed blurry. I saw no facial features and it had no hair. I remember quickly ducking my head and when I looked up again, it was gone. Now I know this wasn't the curtain to the first window. The thing was at least a foot away from the window and the curtain to that window was parted a little. Not to mention, if it was the curtain, it should have been a shaded grey. The humanoid was a lighter shade of grey, even in the dark, but the thing that really got to me was that when my mother got up to do whatever, she gets up every hour. She turned on the lights to the bathroom in the kitchen. I got up after her since I didn't want to be alone and not have someone blocking that area, and just to try and wake up a little. She went out to the kitchen and I noticed that one of our cats, at the time our large orange cat named Rudy, was all puffed up and in the corner of the kitchen near the dishwasher. Rudy is a big cat and a lazy one, hardly reacting to anything. He was one of the more relaxed cats we had, but that night he was puffed up and had an angry vibe on him. When my mother tried to touch him, he hissed at her, bit her hand, and then ran off to the table. I don't think the rest of this night matters. Nothing else happened, and the day after this happened, the cats were acting normal, but Rudy was still angry, which was so odd to me. He is a sweet cat, not one to become aggressive. That's all I have about that night. Now this brings it to now. Yesterday at 12, I was on my phone, when I was drawn to the window for no reason. As I pulled the curtains back, I remember seeing this faintly whitish thing in the woods. My room is on the second floor. Our room has two windows, one facing the driveway and road, the second facing the actual woods. The wood is on a hill, a steep hill. The figure was behind a tree. It seemed to be hiding or trying not to be seen, just peeking out. When I opened the curtain a bit wider to get a picture of it, it disappeared behind the tree. I didn't get the picture, but I planned to wait for a bit but it never came out, and I think I fell asleep at some point and woke up in the morning. Nothing has happened now, but I'm just waiting to get some picture of it so I could prove it to you guys. This might sound odd, but I'll update this whenever something happens. Names and details leading up to this encounter aren't very important, so I'll just set the scene. Two 14-year-old girls on an isolated Kentucky mountaintop a few hours after I flipped the ATV, injuring my friend's leg. I had tried to act quickly, but I was too weak to get the ATV upright by myself. Once the both of us lifted it, we promptly flooded the engine. A woman of action, I helped my friend up, 
put it in neutral and decided to push the ATV down the mountain with my friend occasionally tapping the brake. Suddenly, she halts our progress and asks me to jump on the back. In front of us was a monster of a snake. It was the fattest, angriest hog snake I had ever seen, right across our path, blocking us. But this time it was almost dusk. Because the snake was easily the size of my arm, we decided to just stare it down, waiting on it to crawl on. Finally, I could push again, though I wasn't thrilled about walking next to this lazy flat goblin. I didn't have a long way to go and we'd be able to coast on down, or maybe my parents would come searching for us. There was still plenty of light, but the sky was pink from sunset. Simultaneously, our heads snapped to look behind us. I'm not entirely sure why we even looked. There wasn't a sound, no twig snap. It had been something instinctual, because we both looked back at the tree-lined path we'd slowly come through. Every hair that I owned raised. My blood ran cold in an instant. I spared one quick glance at my friend, mostly because I hadn't seen it yet. She had. She was completely frozen and I followed her gaze to about 15 feet behind me. There sat this creature, hunched over, boneless yet with some humanoid form. It was skin, pale white skin. At first I thought that was all that it was, like Buffalo Bill caught Gollum. Then, barely a second after that, panicked observation I noticed its face, its eyes, they were so deeply set that at first terrified glance, I thought that they were only empty black pits. The setting sun struck them just enough that I could see the refraction. Its nose was flatter than Voldemort's. This hunched, naked, pale creature was studying me just the same. Its lips were pale, pink, and trembling. A horrifying thought informed me that this gaunt creature was famished, starving, hungry. As if it heard my inner dialogue, it raised its skin-wrapped skeletal hand to silence me. Then, it waved its claws one finger at a time. I wished that I had counted them, but I was trying desperately not to pee myself. Then, the sweetest sound I'd ever heard, the ATV started. My friend, the angel, must have turned away long enough to try it, so I risked it as well. I leaped onto the back of the ATV, sobbing and wrapping my arms around my buddy so tightly that probably the reason for her cracked rib and not the accident. When I glanced back, it was gone. Halfway down the mountain, we ran in my parents. It was pitch black. We survived and talked about it later at the hospital. Turns out she didn't even know how to start the ATV. It wasn't her. It's been a few years since this happened. I haven't been back on the mountain. I'm still friends with her and we've talked about it a few times. We've theorized various possibilities as to what it could have been, but we can't agree. I've tried to find similar encounters, even in mythology, and finally, I'm here. I'm sure that I've not explained it very well, but I did try my best. Do you have any ideas as to what it is? Did it want to eat me or help us out? We both saw it, so at least I know I'm not crazy. My whole family is from Louisiana, born and raised, and I was born and raised in Houston my whole life due to my parents getting jobs in the oil industry. I spent every summer and most holidays with my grandparents because my mom was a single, hard-working mother. I loved spending time with them, and I loved the house. I had numerous experiences as a youngin', but this one stands out the most. Please ask if y'all would like to hear the other accounts. When I was four to five years old, I don't exactly remember, I was at my grandparents' house. It's an old wood house out in the country, and I was getting ready for my nightly bath. I wanted to be a big boy, so my grandma, Mima, let me bath alone that night. I really looked forward to bathing at her house every time I was there because they always had these soap balls. They were made of gel and were soft to the touch that I would dump in the bath with me, and when they got warm enough, they would dissolve and turn into this frothy, awesome bubble bath. So as I'm sitting in the bath, doing my thing, putting on Santa beards, bubble hats, I kept hearing voices from the rooms outside of the bathroom. There was a room on each side with a door leading into the bathroom. I would occasionally hear my name or something like it, 
and I would yell out, what, to my cousins who would also spend summers there. They wouldn't respond, and I didn't think anything of it because my cousins and grandparents were in the rooms when I started to take my bath. So about the time the bathtub is full, the bathroom lights just start turning off and on, rapidly, like someone was just flipping the switch on and off trying to scare me. I was the youngest cousin, so this happened very often. I remember thinking it was the mean cousin, so I yelled out for Jake to stop, and it did. Thinking my grandma, who always had my back, me ma, told him to cut it out. As soon as I get back to having fun in the bath, I kept hearing my name and my cousins playing and laughing outside of the bathroom. So I got anxious and wanted to go play with them before we all had to lay down for bed. As soon as I stand up in the bathtub to get out, the light completely shuts off. It's pitch black, there are no windows in the bathroom, and both the sinks turn on. I can hear the sinks running as they've been fully turned on, and I'm just standing there in the pitch black wondering how my cousins were doing this, and I yelled again at them to stop, but the lights didn't come back on and the sinks are still going. I proceed to get out of the tub, turn the lights on, turn the sinks off, dry off and put my sweet Batman pajamas on. I could still hear my cousins playing outside the bathroom so I was trying to hurry up and get out there with them. As soon as I open the first bathroom door connected to room one, I realize no one is there and they must be on the other side. I walk to the other door to room two, open it and again, I was met with nothing but silence. No cousins in sight. At this point, I get a little scared and run to the front of the house where I find my grandparents and all four cousins sitting in the living room watching a movie. I ask, y'all aren't playing anymore? And they all just kind of looked at me like an annoying little cousin and didn't respond. So I get aggravated, saying I heard them playing outside the room and that they kept turning the lights on and off and turned both sinks on when I was in the bathroom. As soon as I say this, my grandma yells at me to hush and gets this weird, almost alarmed look on her face. So I just sat down with everyone and chalked it up as my cousins lying to my grandma so they wouldn't get in trouble. It's been over 20 years later and I still think about who or what that was messing with me over 20 years ago. Ever since I can remember, I had the dreams. They weren't especially memorable or interesting, too lifelike to hold the attention of a little girl whose favorite game was make-believe. Her name was Elizabeth, but she went by Eliza. She was my third grandmother. We would walk around her garden or bake cookies. She'd ask about my life and how I was doing. I'd tell her about starting kindergarten, moving schools in second grade, and moving states and fourth. She was my subconscious confidant, a constant for my formative years, but Grandma Eliza wasn't as exciting as my other dreams about ripping the faces off of vampires and turning into a mermaid fairy ballerina performing in the Nutcracker. Just ordinary. At least until just before my 10th birthday. We were decorating cookies at her kitchen table when Grandma Eliza told me we were to go on a walk. It was a normal activity we did together except this time in place of her garden, we were in a cemetery. I can't see you anymore, she smiled. I have to go now. But why, I asked. I was curious. This wasn't like any other dreams. Well, it's time for me to leave. But remember, I'll always love you. I'll always look after you. She hugged me close and I breathed in her warm, familiar smell looked up at her kind face that looked so like mine. The laugh lines and freckles likely a premonition of my future, and then I woke up. Immediately, I knew something was off. I could hear the faint sounds of sobbing from the other end of the house. Confused and scared, I walked towards the kitchen. My father, the epitome of strength, masculinity, strong-willed and often stone-faced, crumpled in a chair, my mother comforting him, the telephone in his lap. I didn't know what to do. I had never seen my dad cry before. My mom saw me and motioned me to come comfort him. Are you okay, daddy? I asked, more sobbing. My mom answered for him. We just got a call and your dad's birth mother passed away last night, she said. The image of Grandma Eliza standing in the graveyard flashed through my head. 
Grandma died? I asked, knowing that wasn't what she meant. No, sweetie. Your dad was adopted and we just found out his birth mom passed away. He never got to meet her, so he's very upset right now. Mostly calmed down, my dad lifted me into his lap. Was her name Elizabeth? I asked. Their eyes widened a little bit. But she went by Eliza, right? I continued. Incredibly, I recalled several facts and preferences of my grandma Eliza I had learned from years of dreaming about her. My parents were more than a little shaken as I told them about the year's worth of dream meetings, ending with the one I just woken up from. But she said she loved me very much, and she would continue to look after me. I'm not entirely sure they believed me, but it was undeniable that I knew things about her I could not have possibly known. My mom tried to explain it away as half-heard conversation or a child's imagination just happening to hit a few marks, but I knew. I knew my grandma Eliza was visiting me. I knew she had wanted to meet me, and living a thousand miles away, she did it the only way she could. It wasn't until years later I found out she had also been a paranoid schizophrenic. She spent large portions of her life hospitalized. America wasn't kind to mental illness in the 60s. As I grew up and my own mental health began to deteriorate, an old fear came back to the surface. Why did she contact me? What sort of connection did we share? How did she do it? We were connected by illness, I wondered. Did her periods of hospitalization allow her to figure out how to reach into my dreams? Thankfully, my mental health has been stable for the past few years, and currently I am not experiencing any schizoaffective symptoms, and although I haven't seen her since that night, I can't help but wonder, did she reach out to me, or did I reach out to her? When I was younger and first getting into paranormal research, my dad had told me the story of an experience that had haunted him since before I was born. About nine years before I was born, my dad was 16 and had been staying at his uncle's house. The house was located across from a cemetery, where, incidentally enough, my great uncle and grandfather are both now buried, where my dad and his cousin would walk through to get to a small reservoir to go fishing late at night. One of these nights, my dad is carrying the canoe in front and his cousin is carrying the rear. My dad turns his head briefly and spots a man standing by some of the graves. The man is very tall, with a wide brim undertaker hat, a trench coat, and a long beard. My dad said he had looked straight out of the 1800s. He turns to his cousin and asks him who that guy is, to which his cousin says he doesn't see anyone. My dad turns and the stranger is nowhere to be seen. The gravestones are not very large in the cemetery and it's a fairly wide and open area, so there is nowhere the man could have gotten so quickly. My dad drops the canoe and runs back to the house. The story should end there, but it doesn't. Two years later, my dad is sleeping on the floor of his uncle's house. My grandparents are asleep on the couch near him and my uncle is upstairs. My dad hears a faint scratching sound on the window screen and he jumps up thinking his cousin has come by to go fishing. He kneels by the window and opens the shade a few inches, his face close so he can see a little better. Separated by only a screen is the same man from before, and my dad screams. My grandfather leaps up and grabs a gun from the wall, and my great uncle comes running down the stairs with his gun. They search the property within seconds of my dad screaming and find no one on the property. Fast forward 20 some odd years and my dad and I are going shopping at a local grocery store. We were less than 5 minutes from home and went to pick up a few things we had needed. As we turned from one aisle into the next, turning out of the aisle we left is a tall, long beard, a wide brim undertaker hat, and a trench coat. Every hair on my body went on end. He looked as solid as any person I had ever seen, but the way he was dressed clashed with my logic and rationale. We both froze as the man continued down the aisle, walking immediately down the middle with an endless and deliberate slowness. We both pressed against the edges of the aisle as he walked past us. His eyes have never left ours the entire time. 
Wordlessly, we drop everything where we stood and ran to the car. For most of the drive home, we say nothing. Finally, my dad says that that was the man I told you about, and I simply say, I know. When we get home, my grandmother notices we're both pale and terrified. We tell her the story in its entirety, and she says, I've seen him too. Confused, my dad asks when, and she tells us about when she was pregnant with my uncle, who is two years older than my dad. She's returning home to their apartment, and as she was walking up the stairs, the man had been coming down, brushing past her. She thinks nothing of it until she gets to her floor and realizes that the only place he could have come from was her apartment. She checks the lock, and the door is still locked, so she runs downstairs to confront the man, but he's nowhere to be found. My dad passed away two years ago and I haven't seen the man since the day in the grocery store. I have decided that if I see him again, I will ask him who he is. When I was 18, about a year and a half ago, I was lying on my stomach on my bed playing my 3DS. All of my lights were on and I was gearing up to set my game aside to actually go to sleep. Before I did though, I started to hear this horrible sobbing. It was the saddest, most gut-wrenching sound I've ever heard. It sounded like a man just completely losing it, forgetting all the emotional training he'd had all of his life and just letting it all go. It was like a high-pitched male howling and crying. It was so painful just to listen to. I immediately thought that it was my dad. He sleeps just above me, separate from my mother due to his snoring, and my grandfather had been really sick for years. I figured that my grandpa had passed. I didn't think much of ghosts or anything and just left my room, went up the stairs and woke my mother up. By the time I had left the room, the sobbing had stopped and when I left by my dad's room to tell my mom, I couldn't hear the crying anymore. Again, I didn't think anything of it for whatever reason and just figured he was gaining control of himself. I woke my mom up and told her I think grandpa died. She got this look on her face like, oh god, and got up. I thought I was emotionally gearing up for the death of a family member so I left her to it and started just messing around the kitchen to get a drink to keep myself busy. I heard my mom go into my dad's room and I could hear him go, hmm? I got this kind of feeling in my gut that said, he was asleep and I started to shake but I brushed it off as me reading too many unresolved mystery stories. My mom came out after a little bit and looked at me really quizzically. Everything's okay, she said. He was asleep. I started to shake and cry immediately. I was shaking so bad that I couldn't actually stand and my mother had to come over and hold me up. I knew exactly what I had heard and I was also letting go of all this emotional energy that I had pent up all at once. It took quite a while for her to calm me down and to get me to stop crying. I don't remember feeling scared or full of adrenaline, but I do remember crying and shaking. My memory is hazy after that. I actually think I went down to my bed and to sleep without much issue. I don't know why it didn't bother me more at the time. My dad said that he had left on a World War II documentary and insisted it was just that. Only issue is that I've slept under him since I was 11 and he usually falls asleep in the middle of some documentary or other. I only occasionally hear his movies through the ground and it's always been kind of quiet. Nothing I have ever heard has ever been that loud and that clear looking back on it and it sounded more like it was in my room than coming from the floor above, let alone on that night. None of the other noises that might have been the documentary made it through the floorboards that night. My mom joked it was his snoring, but we run into the exact same issues. Some of the people I've told say it was sleep paralysis or just plain old dreaming. For one, I've experienced sleep paralysis before and every single one has been purely auditory for me, meaning that my eyes cannot be open at the same time. I've yet to come across an exception, so the fact that my eyes were open and I was playing a game at the time kind of wipes out that idea for me. Also, again, I wasn't even properly lying down and my lights weren't off. I wasn't even sleepy, really, so I definitely wasn't sleepy enough just to fall asleep in that position. During the same week, I was home alone with my dog in my lap. I was sitting on the couch upstairs facing away from the stairway. I heard someone running up and down about four steps at the top really deliberately about four times. 
Again, I had this weird non-issue with it at the time. I didn't feel all that afraid, no adrenaline rush or anything. I did get up to grab a knife, but I still wasn't scared when I was doing it. It's only as I'm writing it that I realize how weird that sounds, like I didn't feel scared at all, but my body went through the motions of being scared in both situations, shaking, grabbing a knife, etc. The sound of the sobbing has always really stuck with me. It truly is the saddest sound I've ever heard, and I will never, ever forget it. I do go back and forth on whether it was a high-pitched male sobbing or female, it being female is slightly more juicy as we've had a woman end herself in our garage back in the 50s after a divorce and we've joked about her haunting her house for years. But I think it was male because my immediate reaction was, oh, it's my dad. And I remember it sounded especially sad because it was like someone completely letting go of all social norms. I've never had any more paranormal experiences in my house. It was just those two specific instances in that couple of day time span. I actually don't believe in the paranormal, but I also think it's stupid to believe there are things we can't explain. So these experiences have always been a weird middle ground for me. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, or let's read official and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt.com. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.